Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Tips Blitz 2019, a group YouTube machinist collaboration started by Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop, so you should check out her channel. The idea is that we all make uh, quick videos uh, about different things that we do in the shop, little tricks that make our lives easier, and uh, we share them all with the hashtag TipsBlitz19, so go ahead and click that hashtag down below to see all of the uh, collaborators participating in this project, and I am going to do stupid four jaw chuck tricks. So let's go. All right, stupid four jaw trick number one is copper soft jaws. You've probably seen these. They're great for doing second operations uh, where you have to clamp down on a machined surface that you don't want to ding up with the chuck jaws. And uh, they're easy to make out of uh, 24 gauge copper, as you see here. But uh, this thin material, uh, it loses its shape easily. And over time, the chuck jaws will chew through them and you have to make new ones. So I'm going to show you how to make some new ones out of 16 gauge copper that's much heavier and uh, will last a very long time. Now the most critical dimension is the width of the nose of each chuck jaw. So you want to get that measurement down and you're going to put that measurement down on this little template here and you're going to work outward from there. So next you're going to measure the 45 degree slope on each side and you're going to add that outboard on your template of the nose. And then the last dimension is the side profile of each jaw and you also need half of the back and uh, those two dimensions added up are going to form the last segment of our jaws. So there's the side profile there and then uh, the, the back, you want to go a little less than half the width of the back because that's going to form this little tab that we're going to fold over. And so that those two dimensions added up are your final segment. So once you've got that little template made, then uh, you can just mark that down on some 16 gauge copper sheet as you see here. And there's lots of different ways to cut this. If you have proper sheet metal tools, uh, a break uh, would be the easiest way to do this, but uh, I don't have one, so I'm using my uh, band saw, and uh, this also works just fine. I would not try to do this with uh, like tin snips uh, because it's gonna distort uh, the material too much. So try to find some other way to do it. And this is just one of those cheap four by six band saws set up uh, in the vertical configuration. And the tables on these things are really terrible, but uh, just clamp a piece of uh, melamine or other smooth material in there and just push it into the saw a bit and uh, makes a perfect uh, zero clearance table for working with sheet metal. And then we're going to use the template to mark the fold lines on the material. And I'm just going to use my vise and some channel locks to do the folding. Again, if you had a press break or proper sheet metal tools, this would be uh, a lot easier, but uh, this works just fine. Now it's important to start with that center section again, the nose on the end of the jaw, because that's the most critical one. And so the first bend is easy. For the second bend, uh, you can use a piece of angle iron in the vise to get the clearance that you need to make that bend. And uh, you're trying to get, again, that 45 degree angle on the nose, uh, on the sides of the nose, and then the width of the nose needs to match your chuck jaws. And uh, get that as close as you can because everything else kind of depends on that being a good fit. And then once you've got that, then you can just use the chuck jaw itself as a uh, die effectively uh, in the vise and just compress the copper around it like so. And now we want to mark for the little tabs to fold over. So you want to hold the copper a little bit below the surface of the jaws. You want the machine surface of the jaw to be proud of the copper. And then just mark that. And then you can snip this with some snips. And then bend those tabs over. And you want those tabs to, uh, to not be overlapping or touching in the middle. So trim them a little shorter with the snips if you need to. Because you need a little bit of a gap there. And then that jaw fits on there like so. Now don't worry if the fit isn't perfect at this stage because we're going to fine tune it here in a moment. So make three more of those and then we can install those on the four jaw. And they should be a fairly snug fit so that they'll stay in place uh, while you're manipulating the, the jaws. And next grab a piece of round stock and stick it in there and then clamp down all four jaws good and tight. And uh, this is going to compress the copper and form it to the ends of our jaws. And uh, this is going to help uh, fine tune the fit. So crank down on these guys really good and tight and compress that copper. And that compression tends to flay out the sides and that's okay. Then we just come back in here with some channel locks and squeeze those copper jaws in again. 
And once we've done this process, now those jaws are going to be uh, quite a good uh, fit for each jaw. They're going to match the shape of the jaw quite well, and they will stay in place on their own from now on. You can actually do this with the three jaw, but it introduces a lot of run out, and you can't dial that run out out like you can with the four jaw, so it's really only useful for facing. And stupid four jaw trick number two is working with square stock. Now I'm sure you know, of course, you can hold square stock in a four jaw and face the ends. And you've probably also seen uh, the Turner's cube, which is uh, an exercise that uh, lots of lathe operators do when they're learning is, you know, you can make a cube in the four jaw by facing each side. But uh, what if we want to face the long side of a piece of stock like this and it's too long to fit in our jaws? What can we do? Well, I'm going to show you how we can do this in the four jaw. So we're going to start by facing the ends like you would with the Turner's cube. And uh, it doesn't actually matter if the part is concentric here because you're just facing the end. And uh, if like in, in this case the stock is too big to fit uh, through the bore on your four jaw chuck, you may have to uh, take very light passes and there's going to be a length limit on this because of course you're not going to be very rigid with a setup like this. And annoyingly that tool is not on center so it left a little nub there. And now here comes the stupid trick. Just go ahead and flip around two of the jaws and leave the other two in the normal position. And uh, I'm sure this is obvious and stupid, but hey, I warned you these tricks were stupid. But I think this is something that a lot of beginners just don't think about, that uh, you don't have to have all four jaws in the same orientation. You can flip around two of them or one of them or whatever you need to do to fit whatever weird piece of stock that you have. And so once you've done that, well, now we can just face this guy off. A power crossfeed is really useful here because facing this guy off is equivalent to facing off like a 7 inch diameter part, so it's going to take a little while. And as you can see it leaves a very nice finish, and I also fixed the tool height. And stupid four jaw trick number three. What if I now want to make a hole in this part in, a, in an arbitrary location? You know, I've done some layout and I got a spot right here. And you know, maybe this is like a crankshaft journal or uh, it's an alignment pin. So it needs to be very, very square. You want to do it on the lathe. You know, the drill press isn't going to be good enough. So uh, can we do this without a mill? Yes, we can. We can do it on the four jaw. Here's how. So I'm going to use those layout marks to feel for where the center is that I want to drill my hole and I'm going to center punch that. I'm going to center punch it a couple of times, get a nice deep center there because that's going to be important here. Now let's take another look at the four jaw. We've got these jaws that move on tiny lead screws, right? They're lead screws. Each of these pairs of jaws is giving you two axes of translation. So the face of the four jaw is really a rotating frame of reference and you can use those jaws to move your part in space however you want. I mean within a limited range of course. So here's where the trick comes in. It's a dead center. Yeah, you know what a dead center is, right? Well, uh, you may have noticed but never thought too much about this guy back here. It's a center hole. It's how they make these guys. They're made between centers for precision, but we can actually use that. So I'm going to plant one end of the dead center in our nice deep center punch that we made and support the back of the dead center with my live center uh, using that center. And now what I can do is uh, just sort of visually uh, use that dead center uh, as a frame of reference to get uh, the hole that we're trying to drill roughly centered in the chuck on the axis of the lathe. And uh, you know, I'm holding it with one hand here because I don't want this guy to fall while I do this. You may have to back off the tailstock a little bit because as this guy straightens out, of course, it's going to need more space between the work and the tailstock. Once that guy is eyeballed in, now we can bring in the dial indicator and we just dial this guy in like we would anything else. And it looks pretty weird because the dead center isn't spinning like you're used to the thing you're dialing in spinning, uh, but it still works just fine. It's still measuring the run out as we spin the work. And uh, so as you spin the work, the, the dead center is kind of wobbling back and forth without turning, but it's telling you what the run out is uh, at that point on the work. And so uh, you just dial this in like you would anything else. And here you can see how well this works because uh, the dead center is so precisely made it's actually quite easy to get it dialed in extremely well. You know I've got it within a few tenths here and it didn't take long. And so now we can go in with a center drill and just uh, spot that center punch. And I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole here for giggles. 
and you can already see how the center hole is spinning on the axis of the lathe. Now, uh, there is going to be some vibration in the machine because this is a, you know, a mass that's quite off center, so you may have to run a little slower than, than you would like, but uh, you can still get the job done. And there we have it, perfectly squared hole drilled in an arbitrary place on this square piece of stock using nothing but the four jaw chuck. A quick note about uh, doing this trick with round stock, it does also work, but there's more of a limit on your range of travel because as you can see, the, uh, the jaws that are opposite the ones that you want to shift uh, can start to trap the piece on the edges and you can still manipulate them and get it dialed in, but it does take more fiddling around. But as you can see here, we've managed to uh, dial in this uh, center punch mark on the edge of this bore. So this is a great trick for doing bolt circles and things like that on the lathe. So I hope these stupid four jaw tricks have uh, shown you uh, that if you're creative, you can use the four jaw and the power of the lathe to do almost anything that the mill can do. And uh, this is why everybody says you should start with the lathe because it's true. There really isn't much you can't make on the lathe if you're creative enough with your setups. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my Patreon and we'll see you next time.